Welcome to Bums on a Boat. My name is Joel. I have just made the full-time transition to living aboard. I have owned Shock Mate for seven years. And when I bought this boat, I didn't know anything about sailing or boats or boat life. In this episode, I'll share my systems and what I now deem necessary for a healthy quality of life on a sailboat. I also have a friend visiting with no boat life experience. He's here to help and to learn if this might be for him. Dreams are easy, growth is painful, and balance is key. So all the systems that I put into place before I moved back on to Shock Mate full time, well, that is different than when I first bought this boat. You know, I didn't care if I was pooping in a bucket. I had a toilet, if it didn't work, there's a bucket. If the refrigerator didn't work, which it didn't for a lot of the time, you know, you just get a cooler, you use ice, or you just don't use refrigeration. You eat beans and rice and sprouts. Whatever the food is that needs to be frozen or refrigerated, you just don't, don't get that. You drink warm water. You go with very little to no showers. So like, I've done that, I've lived that, and you can live minimally, you can live more minimally than even I did. I mean, you could, I've seen it, you know, there's, there's different scales. I have a friend who has flown all the way from Washington State to here in Grenada, he thinks he might possibly want to live that boat life. He's like, eh, boat life looks kind of cool, man. He's here to learn about boat life. I'm just gonna put him to work. In fact, I already have, and he's learning quick. Oh, the deck really needed this. Let's go, baby! Woo! All right, we're on our way to go pick up Ezra. We're gonna pick up some water and fuel on the way. The dinghy and uh, running outboard, that was something I needed to have before I moved on. Now the dinghy's losing air and she's not the fanciest, but I am able to pump it up and she holds air long enough. The outboard starts and runs. I don't think I'd, I'd go full time boat mode, you know, if I was paddling. Um, for a time, obviously, I had to do that in order to get the boat up and going, but I wasn't living the full time boat lifestyle quite yet. Working outboard, floating dinghy, that's a must for me to live the full time boat lifestyle. Right on time. Well, I almost didn't because my alarm went off on my phone at 7.30 and I'm like, oh, that's great. I got plenty of time. No, my phone's still on Miami time, so it was 8.30. So I wake up and I'm like, oh, I must go. It's got five gallons of regular gasoline, 95 EC, which is ah, about $35 for five, about 35 US. It's pretty comparable to pretty much anywhere, I'd say. It's not crazy expensive, crazy cheap. It's gonna be a scorcher. I can't see my eyes. You guys ever just look directly into the sun without glasses? Ooh, what? Why don't you try? Ooh. No, 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 come on, let me get a close up. All look right. directly into the sun. Oh God. So five EC for yeah. just 10 gallons. Yeah. Wow. I gotta do the math there. Thank you. That's pretty good, All thank right. you. You're Bye. Bye. I don't know, that's pretty good. Five UC, 10 gallons. I think so. So that's like $3 for 10 gallons. It's doable. Hi, I'm Ezra. Uh, who am I? I'm I don't know, a caregiver, I guess. You, yeah. Caregiver, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to learn how to sail from my best buddy, Joel. Uh, it's going great. It's hot. I like it. It's good. <laughs> Thank you, Ezra. That couldn't have been easy. I don't know if you guys have ever talked to a camera for the first time and someone's like, hey, here's a camera. Introduce yourself. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. And he, that was that first take for Ezra. So thank you, Ezra. You know, he's just jumping into all this, you know, vlogging, uh, the sailing boat life, all of it. He's like, all right, let's just see what's ha what happens. I'm, I'm down. At least the neck hairs. Yeah. I was telling Buzz for boat life, those neck hairs there. Ooh, that gets hot, man. I, I got a little too, but you know, it's not like not like I have dealt with in the past. Hello, Shocky baby. Shock my baby. Shock. For me. Good dismount. All right, looks like Ezra's got the dismount down, getting off the dinghy from the boat. I think he's a natural. I think he's gonna be able to do this. And it is nice to have an extra hand, like for every, all like like handing water up, fuel, all these little things. It's really nice. So thank you, Ezra. Mask. All right. So you've never ever scraped a boat. 
Never ever. But you have snorkeled. Mm -hmm. Ezra's, I think, got as much information as he needs to, to get started. Got him his scraper. I got my scraper. All right, Ezra. It's coming off easy. I'm going to show you a couple strokes here. And then you're going to take off towards the bow. I'm going to take off towards the aft. We're going to meet each other on the other side. We're going to do the water line first. Let's go, baby. Life. You got some krill, krill on you. That's what's for breakfast. We only did about half the job. Now we have to clean ourselves, clean all of our gear, and keep the oh. boat organized. Oh, so the whole thing, <laughs> dude, there's so there was more krill in the water than I have ever seen in my life. And literally, it was like right when you scrape the boat, and you and then you look, and it was like krill covered it, so it almost looked like you didn't scrape, and it was kind of annoying one thing i kind of stayed minimalist on is the shower um I, i'm still using a weed sprayer for the shower so i did not say i gotta have running water shower with pressure in order to move on i decided i could live with this this uh this little uh weed sprayer for a little bit longer i'm just i don't even know what to do that's a lot um just put everything with my yeah. clothes there we'll, we'll We'll get ourselves all nice and clean and then we'll take care of the stuff. It's just, <laughs> just everywhere. I was just first mate on a charter season in the Bahamas and a big part of the whole job of chartering for groups is like, is keeping the boat clean, keeping salt water off things, keeping it organized. And it's a big job, like just basically like, it's almost just as big of a job that Ezra and I have right now. Um, cleaning ourselves, getting salt water off, getting creel off, cleaning all of our gear, hanging it all up, and, and then like and putting everything away. It does not work. It's not very functional. I was telling him about the long hair, and you know, I've, I've had some long hair in my day on boat life, and I kind of learned it's cool, it's fun, but uh, like things like this, it, it's gnarly. I mean, he's got, he's gonna have his hands full washing his hair, and again, as we're talking about boat life and um, talking about resources you know if you have long hair you're, you're gonna blast through so much more water and if you're wanting to make your resources last a little bit you know all those little things we were walking down the road and we saw leo leo's a guy that sells fruits vegetables out of his backyard and he was selling sugar cane which this was white when we bought it mm. oh and you like bite it and suck it just like that I've, I've never had one you don't actually eat it you just like Suck it. And throw it off the boat. It's so good. Oh, wow. Natural sugar. Mm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, that's 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 immature. But but um I'm in the bathroom right now and I, I wasn't actually, but um very important was for me to have a working toilet and the pro move was um when I went replaced this job scope bump. Um, actually what I did is I bought a brand new job scope pump, brand new toilet. I had this Raritan and it was killing me. So I bought a whole extra pump and when I got back to the boat, the other pump wasn't quite working right. And it was so easy to just remove the pump and put the brand new pump on and it just, boom, started working. So these job scope pumps, I'm actually a fan of. They're just really cheap, easy to replace and you can find replacement parts if you need. But for me, I just like having a whole spare pump on the boat and when the, when it starts acting funny, just swap the pump out. I still have so much to do to get Shock Mate sailing. So it's a whole nother level to uh, get your boat livable, but then to get it livable and ready to sail, that's another level. And we're almost there. Ezra's actually been helping me do that. Pretty exciting. Um, we got new jib sheets here, one for each side, and that needs to be run. And once the jib seats are run, we already have the main rigged up. Um, the engine is running, which was another thing I wanted, by the way. I forgot about that. The engine needed to be running. I wanted the engine running before I moved on the boat so I could charge batteries if I needed to, so I could use it if in an emergency, and also because I wasn't going to move on the boat without, without intentions of going anywhere. 
I want to move this boat. So I wanted the engine running. And the reason why I wanted it running before I got on the boat was because I didn't want to live on the boat and then rip and have engine parts everywhere and oil and everything and then trying to sleep on the boat. I was like, I have krill in my ear. Let me see. I'm just like, do you feel it? We'll have to pour some alcohol in there. Yeah, there's a little piece of him. Oh man, you really did. <laughs> All right, we got to pour some alcohol in our ears. I think Ezra's got, ooh, I do too. Oh man, I literally just pulled out a big one. Very first thing when I got back was clean the boat. Like I had to clean mold off. I had to clean every little area. I had to pull everything out, go through it, throw things away, organize. For me, and that's that's new because like seven years ago when I bought this boat, I did not care about organization or cleanliness or anything. In fact, being organized, being clean, that was the enemy. It's like, no, you guys are all ego driven and you're caring about what you look and you're caring about all this. No, no, the whole thing is don't care about what you look like, don't care about anything, just let everything fall apart. So I have gone through a transformation of my own where everything has to be kind of clean in order for me to feel okay. I need refrigeration. So when I first moved on the boat, that was another thing. Refrigerator, no refrigerator, it's fine. We'll use ice, we'll use a cooler, or we just won't eat cold food, who cares? Water doesn't have to be cold, it could be warm. Sure, I get that, I get that. I lived that. Um, but now I like cold water, I like food to be cold, and um, I like to be healthy, and so having a refrigerator gives me more options for a healthy diet. The next thing before I even came on this boat was water storage, running water. Whoops, gotta turn the water pump on. Yeah. So I, I had to replace my water storage, so that was a whole issue when I came back to my boat. Um, before I moved on, I needed to replace those, replace the hoses, um, I had to fix filters, I had to get the system so it's running. So that when I turn the faucet, water comes out. I also needed to go find um, a water purifier. Um, so not only does the water get filtered before it comes out, but then it goes through this, and it's also being filtered so I have nice drinking water and then I put it in the refrigerator and it's cold drinking water um, and then I have water to do the dishes there's so many things that I use the running water for and to live on this boat without running water uh, again I've done it it's doable but uh, this new phase of life I would like running water so that's that's a must for me just topping up my brand new battery bank, which was another necessity before I moved on full time. I've got two six volt Trojan uh, T105 batteries. So it's actually like a very small battery bank. On the scale of battery banks, this is teeny weeny, but it's the same battery bank that I sailed all the way here with. And so I know how it works and I know what it's capable of. So for this, uh, for this phase, I just went with what I already had. I replaced them brand new, but the same battery bank. I would like to go lithium. I would like to expand my battery bank and all of that, but it wasn't really the time for that. For me, I'm ready to start sailing. That's a really big project. And I want to do projects that get shock ready to sail and go, but I want to do some sailing and then I'll do that. This is a goal of mine to upgrade the battery bank. But for now, two six volt Trojan uh, run in uh, series. So they're basically one big 12 volt battery. So it's not a lot, but uh, each one of these is 220 amp hours. So, and you can see my water storage is right here. And so they're just water bags and uh, doing well. These are the things I have deemed necessary before I moved on full time. Question for Ezra. And if you guys are watching and um, maybe you're interested in boat life, you can answer the question in the comments below. But I wanted to ask Ezra, why are you interested in boat life? What is it about this that has like piqued your interest and you're like, hmm, maybe, maybe I want to see what they're doing out there on the water. Yeah, absolutely. Like I just, well, I love the community. Everybody's just so kind. Everybody's outgoing. They're willing to help one another, you know, love that. I love the adventure that you can have because like you can have adventures, you know, around where I live and stuff, go on hikes and whatnot, but there's just something so cerebral about going somewhere that maybe somebody's never seen you know mm -hmm. and just finding that anchor out and have your own little thing that's incredible the independence i like that you know just being your own person and do what you got to do that's incredible uh gosh i don't know just everything about it and i love the ocean so yeah. that's a plus water independence community self-sustainability was a big one for me i thought i wanted it mm -hmm. and i do and i'm fighting for it but when i've seen like what it looks like in real life it's too much sometimes it's, it's like well man you know 
Golly, jeez. Uh, uh, maybe I don't want to be fully self-sufficient. You know, maybe I want to rely on somebody for some of these things. But yeah. like that thought goes that's through always, my head sometimes. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. For sure, and it's always good to have somebody around. You know, it's like you can be an independent individual, but you're also humans are social beings. And yeah, I am anyways. Yeah. Some solo sailors I've met, like they're solo sailors for many, many years. They don't seem to need social interactions much. And I'm like... Yeah, like, I, I'll i talk to just about anybody that'll talk back to me. Right. And so, yeah, being alone for, like, months at a time on the water, a couple of weeks, alone, alone. It'd probably be really good for you, though. Probably. Because it's, like, the last thing you want to be. Right, right. right. It's alone for that long. And also all the skills you can learn. Like, mm -hmm. just living day to day, you don't really think about how little you do for yourself and, like, how little knowledge you can apply to things. Well, you're saying, like, in a normal, traditional yeah. life, like, mm -hmm. you don't need to know how to plumb, you don't yeah. need an electrician. Like, even with your car, most people don't even take care of their own cars. Yeah, you don't need to. Right. You just you take it to the And it's a really cool way of living. Like, oh, I'm not, I'm so less critical than I used to be of that. Like, I'm looking at it like, you know, I'm on the edge, I'll be honest. I'm doing this, I'm committed, but... But it's also, yeah, there's the flip side of things. And, you know, there's there's a way to live boat life the same way, by the way. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. You can take the boat in and pay for everything. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to have a monster bankroll. Even if you were doing that on Shock Mate, this boat that I bought for $10,000, everything is pretty low price in the, in the scale of cruising. Mm -hmm, but still. And if you wanted to pay someone to scrape the boat, to fix the engine, all the stuff I've done. <sighs> it's very important to know your boat, even if you do pay for things. Because in an emergency, you know, like out at sea or something, right. you want to know what you're doing. That's always been my, my thing. Yeah. Like, I want to know if something breaks, but hey, to each their own. Some people pay people to fix it. Things break out there, and they're like, yo, boy, got a call. Hey, uh, yo, the prop shaft just went out the back of the boat. Uh, what'd you guys do? Did you not screw it in or what? I'm <laughs> sinking right now. Thank you for helping me scrape the boat. We've got the cockpit clean. We've got the deck clean. Um, so, Shock Mate is almost ready to start sailing. Like, that's, that's the goal. That's what we're working on right now. We've got her livable. Now we want to take Ezra out and, and let him pull some lines and do some sailing. So we got a couple more projects left and then we're going to start moving the boat. These are the tales of Boab. Oh. 